Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to show you how you can stop running salary tasks. So the idea behind this video is, let's say you have some long running salary task and you wanna give users or yourself the option to stop it in the middle of its run. So if it takes 10 minutes and you wanna cancel it, let's say five minutes into it, you can do that. And in this video, I'll show you the process of doing this. So for this example, I'm using Flask, but this will work in any way that you use Celery. Some minor things may be different, but the overall ideas will be the same. So first, let me show you what I have. I have this app that obviously uses Celery, and it has a route where I start the task for accounting. And it's basically going to loop and just print a number each second for 10 seconds. So to do this, I just have to go to slash start, and then we see task started. Now, if I go back to VS Code, I see here in the terminal, it's counting one up to nine, and then it, it will stop. And then I see it says done here. So the code is pretty straightforward. I'm making celery in the typical way that you would do for Flask. I'm not gonna go over this much. So if you wanna learn how to use celery in Flask, I have other videos for that. Then I have my Flask app and I'm connecting to Redis for the broker URL. And then I define the task, count here, and then I have the endpoint for starting it, which you just saw. And then I return both app and celery, and those two things are returned to this file here. So I'm calling create app, and I have app and celery, and then those get run. So this is what my Docker compose file looks like. Actually, let me show you the Docker file first. It just sets up a Python environment. Then in Docker compose, what I'm doing is I'm building a service for celery and a service for web. They're the same code, but one has a command for starting Celery, and the other has a command for starting the Flask app. And then finally, I have one for Redis. So to be able to cancel a running Celery task, the main thing that you need to know is the ID of the task, right? So using that ID, you will be able to basically go into the storage backend for Celery and tell it to abort the task. And we'll see how to do that in a moment. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to basically create a link that will allow the user to stop the task. And it won't work right away, but you'll see how I'm putting the task ID in the link so I have a way to tell the eventual route that handles this which task needs to be stopped early. So to do that, I have this count.delay here. And what I can do is I can have the result of count.delay assigned to task. And then this task is going to have the ID. So what I'll do is I'll pass this to the template and then I'll go into the templates directory here, start, and I'll just create a link and I'll say cancel task. And then I'll have URL for uh, some endpoint. So for now it can be cancel and I'll make that in a moment. So cancel and then the task ID is going to be equal to task.id. So I can just close that out and save it. Now when I try this, if I go to start again, we see that it doesn't work yet, which means we need to add the endpoint for this since we're using URL for cancel. So if I go down here and create another route, I'll create one called cancel. So slash cancel, and this is going to take in a task ID. So task underscore ID, just like I did in the template. And then I'll name this cancel, and it will pass in the task ID. So all I want to do is just print the task ID first and then return canceled and we can try it. So let me go over and go back to start. And now we see task started and we have this button cancel task. I'll just click it and we see it has an ID here in the address bar and then in the terminal, it also prints it. So I'm going to use this task ID eventually to actually cancel the task. So I had to get it and I had to pass it to another route. And this other route will actually cancel the task once I set up the rest of the code. So now what I need to do is I need to make this task behave differently. So I have this task here and there are two things that I want to do. So first I want to set bind equals true. So what bind equals true means is it will pass a value to count or whatever the function is that it's decorating, and it will be the task itself. So by convention, you just use the word self, like if this was a class, and then you can use self or any methods on self inside of the function to do something. And we'll see, we'll use that to 
determine if the task has been aborted or canceled or not. So that's what bind equals true does. Next, we need to have a base for this. So tasks in Celery are typically type of something called async result. But for our case, we want something that can be aborted. So we need to use a different base class. And this is called abortable task. So abortable task here. And I need to import this. So let me just go up to the top and I'll say from celery.contrib.abortable import abortable task. So by having the base as abortable, that will allow us to both abort a task or cancel it, or it would allow us to check to see if a task has been aborted or not. Next thing I want to do is inside of the task itself, I want to check to see if the task has been aborted. So the way that this works is there's going to be some kind of status stored in the back end, which I'll set up in a moment, that says a particular task ID is either running or aborted or you know finished or pending but the basic ones are running or aborted so if it's running then everything is fine then the task can continue running but if it's been aborted then that means you should stop execution of the task by calling a particular method on a task in a different place we'll be able to actually abort the task and then inside of the task itself we can check to see if it's been aborted if it has then we'll exit out of the task so a good way to do this is if you have a loop is at the beginning of every loop, you can check to see if the task has been aborted or not. So inside of the loop, I can say if self dot is underscore aborted, I can simply return and I can say task stopped just like that. And then what it's going to do is it's just going to check this every iteration of the loop and it will completely stop it and return if it has the aborted status. So the aborted status is saved in the backend. And as you can see, I don't have a backend set up. I just have the broker. So what I can do is I can set up a backend. So the key for this is going to be result backend. And since I'm using Redis, I can use that as both the broker and the backend. So I'll just copy this and put it here. So it's going to set up the backend and it's going to save the status of each task ID to that backend. And that's how this works internally. So it's going to look at the task ID of self. It's going to go into the backend, see if it's aborted. If it is, this is true, then it will return. If it's false, meaning that it doesn't have the aborted status, it will continue running. So the last thing I need to do is I need to actually trigger the abort. So right here, I have this cancel route and I have the task ID. So using that task ID, I wanna get the task and I want to call abort on it. So to do that, in Flask, what you can do is you can take the name of the task, so count. You can do count.async result, just like this. So it's a bit of a weird syntax. And like I said, depending on the way that you use Celery, this could be a little different, but the overall idea is you need to get the task associated with the ID. So I have count async result, and then I can pass the task ID to it. And then I'll just assign this to task. And let me get rid of the print statement. And then I'll simply call task.abort. And that will stop the task. So let me stop everything and restart my Docker Compose so the changes to Celery get picked up. And now that everything's ready, I'll go back over to the browser. I'll go to start. And we see it started. So it's counting up and now let me hit cancel task and it says canceled and we see task stopped. So it was counting up to four, it got to four and I hit the link and it says task stopped. Let me just do that one more time. Start, we see zero, one, two, three, four, five. I'll let it go up to seven and now I'll cancel it. Go back, it made it up to eight and then it says task stops. And of course, if I don't cancel it, I'll go to start and it's just going to count up and it's going to end at nine and it will return done. So we should see that in just a moment. Done and that's it. So I have the power as a user to cancel a long running task if I want to by just using this. So of course you can adapt this to your code but the overall ideas are pretty simple. So if you want this code, just go to the description below and you can get this and try it out for yourself. If you have any questions on how any of this works, feel free to let me know.
If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.